a, a very warm welcome to you to this special edition of Collections and Collectors. Now this is a program which interests everyone because everyone's got a hoarding instinct so they're interested in everything. And today we've got two special people with us. We've got um, Barry Hawkins who's been selling things locally here as an auctioneer for many years and his family goes back till 1850 I think in the <laughs> auctioneering correct, yes. business and on my right we've got Margaret who runs the Castle Antiques uh, shop and she's got a great experience in things. Now as a very special visitor today we've got Freddie Garrity of Freddie and the Dreamers. Now when I was coming in just now I heard screams in the courtyard and there was Freddie with his fans getting very excited and with a young woman giving him a kiss. A great welcome to you Freddie and um, tell us what you collect. I collect uh, sheet music or I should say to put it correctly I collect my wife collects sheet music all memorabilia silver discs everything that has anything to do with Freddie and the Dreamers write-ups the whole lot the, the whole caboodle Gosh, that's interesting. It must be a fascinating thing because, of course, in your day, you were back with, up on the top with the Beatles that's right. and you must have some wonderful memories. Yeah. Tell me something about your memories. Uh, well, I, not only the Beatles, I met other people. Like, um, you've heard of the Everly Brothers? Oh, yes, indeed. One smoked Everly and one drank Everly. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, that's nice. But uh, another thing that's always fascinated me, Dreamers. Why Freddie and the Dreamers? Well, believe it or not, I was a brush salesman <laughs> and I was selling brushes in the area where I lived and the band were rehearsing in this council flat <clears throat> and it became quite well known within the area. We were looking for a name for the group as I was selling brushes to the lady just across the road. She says, have you found a name for the group yet? So I says, no, not yet. She says, oh, you're a right lot of dreamers. <laughs> That's good. So we thought that was rather good, actually, yeah. dreamers, and of course it became Freddie and the Dreamers. Oh, I see. Well, that's great. Now, before we came in, um, I asked Freddie what, what would he like me to ask, and he said one of the things he said to me was, ask me about sex. So, Freddie, about sex. Or seven. Oh, so, well I asked for that. Now, Margaret has got one or two things she wants to ask you because she's looked up, looked you up on the internet, I think. Well, we've just been having a little talk about it, haven't we? And we've altered a few things yes. because they've got his date of birth wrong. Really? Well, actually, that was my fault. Because, oh, there you tell me. <laughs> yeah, well, what happened, um, when I was 26, I said I was 21, all right? Because all the band were around 20, 21, Mark. So I thought, well, I don't want to be an old man with that. And I looked 21 <laughs> yeah. at the most. You still do look 21, Freddie. Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> do you want some glasses? <laughs> but I thought, well, OK, I'm 21, so you've got 21 there now. Uh, well, you've got the right age. You've got now, the right 26, age. Yeah. What, is, what is his date of birth, Margaret? Do you want, really want to yes, know? Yes, yeah, we want to 14th know, 14th yeah. of November, 1936. That's my oh, age. He's still a and youngster. And he was born in Manchester. Really? That's right. Yes. And we all know his name. Yeah. <laughs> and you were born Freddy? Yes, actually, my real name's Rocky Flame. <laughs> Rocky Flame? <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, uh, the interesting bit that I heard uh, Margaret telling us was that uh, you were famous for dropping your trousers. Well, that's why I was asking about sex. <laughs> <laughs> I was famous for dropping my trousers and doing a song called Short Shorts. It was the most requested song in the act. Yeah, yeah. Now, whether it was my legs, I don't know. <laughs> or whether it was a feather duster, I don't know. <laughs> I used to drop my trousers, dance around, and I'd jump into the audience with a feather duster, chasing the, w uh, chasing the girls round. <laughs> and then I got a hit record, and all of a sudden, I jumped in the audience, and instead of the girls running away, they ran on top of me. <laughs> the next minute, all you could see was me. Do, do. I've had a high voice ever since. <laughs> <laughs> but, of course, everyone remembers you with your great leap in the air. That's right. And how did you manage that? Because you almost looked as though you were suspended in the air. How did you do that? Uh, I don't know. It just came naturally. Just, you've just got that spring in you. Well, I was always good for a jump. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, I don't know whether you've got anything you'd like to ask uh, Freddie. Barry? No, it's just just memories. That's all I have of you, Freddie. And, and you know, listening to the records and that sort of thing. And uh, it's lovely to see you in such jovial mood. Thank you. I, I wish I was as, as sprightly as you. Well, um, not we're, not, we're not too far a distance in age. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. And I'm pleased to say that Freddie's last appearance. Uh, his last professional appearance was in Downham Market here. Yes. And he came here to open his room at the Collector's World and he did a performance in the evening in Downham Market. So it's great news to have him back and to see him looking so well. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming along, Freddie. And we wish you many more happy years of memories and collecting. And we hope you'll come and show us your sheet music another time. <coughs> Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Thank you for coming. And cut.